this award just reminded me, until I die at 120, I'll still have a lot to do for human rights. My name is Naomi Barasa. This is home. This is Korogosho. Growing up in Korogosho was of course challenging. I felt really angry. I felt embarrassed and very ashamed of my home because of the many things uh, that uh, we did not have, the crime, marginalization that we experienced, but mostly brutality. Brutality from uniformed officers, but also brutality from the society, and especially upon women and children. <laughs> As we were growing up, we witnessed quite a number of cases of uh, child murder, domestic violence, and uh, brutality against the youth, especially in this slum, by the police. And for many years, I cried and cried and cried. But at 17, I decided I've cried enough, and I decided it's time to organize. And I started organizing. Every evening, the youth of Korogosho met here, would always have bonfire there, and would sit. These houses were smaller, so the space was bigger. These houses were also smaller, the space was bigger. And would sit here up to midnight, discussing the question of inequality and what could we do as young people. And basically, this was a, an organizing spot. And we started, and we said, we don't care about our parents. They might not have the energy to do the one radical thing that we are going to do, but uh, we are set for it. So we mobilized, there were no cell phones, so we were literally running from one house to the other, and that's when, that's how the story started. My turning point was this wife Batara in our home. He beat his wife every day, and on this particular day, we took action, and so the guy was arrested, taken to Ruaraka police station for a few days, but the family of this girl came for her, picked her and her kids. Two days later, the same guy mobilized people and murdered my brother in cold blood. What crime had he committed? Just supporting this sister who believed domestic violence must be ended. So that is what then led me to decide, come by and imbaya. And that's where my journey for human rights, mainstream human rights, began. Yeah. Watching ordinary people struggle every day, watching the resilience of poor women, single mothers in the slums, who struggle to make the world a better place. That for me is a daily renewal. So I wake up every morning and I get a call from a lady, Diana from Dipsy, a very elderly woman. And she's like, the police were here to threaten us, but uh, we are going to keep on. We are not relenting on this fight. That really gives me energy, re-energizes me. And I'm like, if they can, why not me? As human rights defenders, this award comes within a period where we are demanding the recognition that our work deserves. Recognition of Nobel Prize. And this is my mini Nobel Prize. <laughs> I am so humbled. Uh, the moment I was receiving that award made me have very mixed feelings. Of course, I was thrilled to receive it. And I was thinking, out of all the defenders in the world, Yani Waliona Tuni Mimi, it quickly sent me back uh, down the memory lane and I remembered all the painful moments that uh, I have gone through. I remembered we were once chomward natiagas with my sister and I chewed a blackout and the next thing Niliamka Niko Nairobi Hospital with Troza Imechomeka Kabisa. So I mean it reminded me a lot of painful moments but it also reminded me the resilience of people, small people and their resilience. At times I regret and I feel like, should I have taken this route? I have children, I'm a mother, 
and sometimes you feel it's too much for your children, but then the family understands and they'll be the ones cheering you and they tell you, uh, we pay bigger prices and bigger costs for this country. <laughs> My biggest focus is making a difference in someone's life. So every day when I wake up, I'm like, God give me strength to touch someone's soul today. And that's sufficient. After doing close to three decades, of course the energy starts going down. And then uh, also with the disappointments of uh, Kenya going back to the dark days, naturally that demoralizes you and you're like, is it time for me to get into a different space now and let a new generation come up? Is it time for me to just forget about this? But then this award just reminded me, until I die at 120, I'll still have a lot to do for human rights. So it, it's really refueled me, pumped new energy in me and uh, set me on the mark to go.